My name is Jared T. Ross, and in this training, I'm going to be breaking down how I made $100,168.70 from a tiny following using what I call the brand supremacy framework. I'm going to walk you through everything. You can take this and go and implement it into your own online presence if you want to start in today. So this document is going to break down the exact framework and systems I use to build what I call a personal monopoly. Very different than a personal brand. I'm going to break that down and collect over six figures in just 15 months with much less than 10,000 followers. You're also going to learn how you can install that same framework and the systems in your own online presence this very month. So if you have an online audience and it's not generating you six figures, it doesn't really matter how big or small your audience is, it works for audiences of just about any size. I'm going to prove it then this framework will give you the foundation of monetizing at scale without selling products or services you don't believe in, running any ads, or having hundreds of thousands of followers. It doesn't matter what niche you're in or what platforms you use, this framework is universal because I've studied and it's inspired by the actual structure and processes of cults. So this is for you, this training is for you. If you have an engaged social media audience, no matter what size it is, that you're not making six figures from. It's also for you if you want an automated system that turns your followers into happy to pay customers. It's for you if you want to monetize your online presence without becoming a sellout. If you have an email list that's not making you any money or enough money. It's also for you if your offer isn't making the sales that you believe it should be. It's also for you it's if your personal brand isn't generating a full-time income right now. And if you haven't established yourself as an authority figure in your niche, this training is also going to be for you because we're going to address all those points. It's also important to note who this is not for. Okay. If you're someone who believes that rich people should not exist, you might as well click away from this video right now. If you believe that selling is an unforgivable sin, this is not for you. If you have no social media presence at all and you don't know how to create and post content, this is not for you. And if you aren't interested in establishing yourself as a strong personal brand that attracts opportunities on autopilot, click to another video right now. So if you don't already know me, my name is Jared T. Ross. In 2021, I dropped out of university to build and monetize my online presence. Now, I was the literal poster child. That's why I have this image here. I was the poster child at my university. On paper, it really didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to drop out because I had the grades. I had the, the leadership um, involvement on the campus. It made no sense on paper. But I knew that I had this framework to go and build out my online presence and monetize it. And that's why I was able to jump ship and make this thing work. And it did. Just seven months later, after I dropped out, I was invited back to the same university to guest lecture on the stuff that I was building my personal brand around, which was the blockchain at the time. Seven months later, and this is me there um, late in, in 2021, building out uh, or doing a presentation on the blockchain at that same university. And after that, I went on to generate well over six figures from my tiny audience, again, still less than 10,000. I was getting flown out to speak at conferences, interviewed on podcasts, working and partnering with millionaires, and helping thousands of people learn how to navigate the, the blockchain space. And the good news for you is I'm not even that special because this framework works. And if you think you need a massive audience to hit six figures and beyond, you're just wrong. I did it with way less than 10,000 followers, but other people are hitting even more insane numbers than me. There's this guy, Dan Bolton, who's a coach, and he's bringing in 7.5 million from 7,500 followers across platforms. You can see here, his Instagram only has 4,000 followers, and I've linked here. I'm going to send you this document. You can see here that he actually only has 7,500 followers, and he's bringing in millions from them because of the way that he operates his business, it, this is just going to show that you don't need a lot of followers to bring in full-time income. There's also Chris who's on track to hit 20K a month with a tiny following of 1,500 on Instagram and another 1,500 over on YouTube and only has one YouTube video on, this, on his profile. There's also Jacob who's bringing in over $4 million over the last five years with a combined following of 19,000. It's a little bit more um, than, than these other guys, but still 19,000 is not a lot of followers. And he's generated six figures plus 
from just his 5,000 YouTube subscribers, which is insane. Then we have Ridge Krause, who used his tiny YouTube channel, 80 subscribers, seven videos to bring in $26,000 in one week. And of course, myself with less than 10K followers, I was get flown out to conferences, well over six figures, consult for startups and a millionaire, teach at my old university and get my book published in another language. The key question you should be asking at this point is why do most creators and personal brands struggle to hit numbers and opportunities like these? The answer, they don't know how to monetize. They don't have a reliable strategy in place. They don't have the systems and automations to scale. They have a mediocre offer that is completely ignored by their followers and they become sellouts when they do monetize and destroy their brand image because they start selling stuff they don't actually believe in, promoting shitty products and services and doing all this affiliate marketing stuff for crap they don't actually use. But implementing this framework that I'm about to break down will literally solve every one of these problems for you. The brand supremacy framework. This is a strategic approach to building and monetizing a cult like following. And it's the same four phase process that I went through myself. So I know that it works. I reverse engineered the exact process that I went through. And you can see this visible in other people as they build out their brands. So phase one, and this is where you start taking notes because this is something you can actually take and implement right now. So phase one is crafting your personal monopoly. The reality is your personal brand is no longer enough. Personal branding is, is getting really, really old. I'm going to prove it here in a moment. You now need to transition to a personal monopoly. Okay. And I'm going to explain the difference between those two. So the outcome, the ideal outcome from completing phase one is laying the foundations to turn your personal brand into a personal monopoly. So here are the key differences between a personal brand and a personal monopoly. A personal brand requires constant maintenance and upkeep. I remember when I first dropped out and I started the process of building that brand online, it was a lot. It was a lot. It required that constant monitoring of my social media and my online presence across all these different platforms. It was a lot. And that leads right into the second point, which is building that personal brand becomes a time suck. It sucks up all your time, and that's the only thing you have time to really commit to if you want to differentiate yourself in the market. Because right now, everyone has these personal brands. I mean, you go, go on Twitter, for example, everyone who has personal brand in their bio, they're almost carbon copies of the other person because they see what works, and they just literally copy and paste the same formats of, of content, the same bios, the same photos. It's It gets really, really boring. So even though it's supposed to be a personal brand and the personal part is supposed to differentiate you people aren't really doing that at this point which is weird third point you have a fragile reputation actually when you have a personal brand it tends to be pretty fragile because you're required to constantly maintain and upkeep that that brand and if you start if you start messing up right people will tear you apart you can really hurt your reputation by making a couple hiccups also when you have just a personal brand, like I just mentioned, you're operating in a red ocean of competition. Everyone has these personal brands right now. It's not really that interesting. It's not that different to say, oh, I have a personal brand. You need to really make yourself stand out through a personal monopoly. I'm going to explain how. But when you have a personal brand, unless it's super, super out there and, and wild and completely different than everybody else, chances are you're just competing against everyone else who says they also have a personal brand. Customers tend to be harder to get because of that red ocean of competition and you're trying to copy all these other personal brands that other people are running the way that they do things. And the key behind a personal brand is that you do it your way. You're not trying to copy other people, but that seems to get lost in translation for a lot of people trying to start a personal brand. Also, when you get stuck in per the personal branding trap, you also tend to get stuck in a niche right? You only are allowed to focus on this. If you start venturing out, you're going to lose your audience's attention and interest. But when you build that personal monopoly, they're really going to be there for you. Not the stuff that you're talking about necessarily. It's a part of it, but they're going to be willing to follow you to all these different areas of interest that you may have. So let's jump over to that personal monopoly side. Number one, instead of that constant maintenance and upkeep that's required for a personal brand, 
a personal monopoly is built on a foundation of self-sustaining systems. And yeah, that sounds nice to say, but what I actually mean is the back-end technology and tools that can automate the process of reinforcing your personal brand and continuing to grow it. Through automations, through funnels, through um, AI tools, it's the real foundation of systems that are self-sustaining. Meaning you can go on vacation for a month and your personal brand is still going to be uh, monitored, it's still going to be growing and upkept and, uh, uh, and maintained. So it's also going to give you autonomy. Instead of becoming a huge time suck for you because of those systems, those self-sustaining systems, it's actually going to give you autonomy in life. And so that's those two points are the main different are the main differentiating factors between a personal brand and a personal monopoly. Autonomy and self-sustaining systems on a personal monopoly side and maintenance and upkeep and becoming a time suck on the personal branding side. When it comes to your reputation, you have a nearly indestructible reputation, right? I have this example below, Kanye West. Is he a personal brand or per personal monopoly? Very obviously a personal monopoly. That man has destroyed his career how many times and he's still here. Because he built that personal monopoly, his brand has become nearly indestructible, right? And he's operating in his own blue ocean. He doesn't really have any real competition for the stuff that he's doing because he's so unique and so out there. He also has customers that are begging to buy. And that's something that's more associated with a personal monopoly, right? You have those offers and that brand around your offers that just make customers go crazy over it. And rather than being stuck in a niche, you become the niche yourself. Not the stuff that you're talking about, that's a part of it, but you yourself are the niche that people are there for and following for. So I'm gonna break down how I actually executed phase one in my own life, in my own brand. So this cultural framework model is something that I came up with after studying cults and cultures for months. Because I had all these friends who would do things and go places that they didn't actually want to do just because it was part of their cultural traditions. That always blew my mind and never really made sense to me. And so I started studying what is it about these cultures that make people do things they don't actually want to do just because it's part of their culture. And this is, the, this is what I found. This framework is what I found creates a culture that pushes people to action. All right, we're going to break down every single element of this very quickly. I can go in another hour on this, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. So mind, right? This, this ring, this first ring right here, mind. This is all about the beliefs about yourself and the world. So for me, that was technology adoption, futurism, and my code of conduct. So these are like my principles for life. Right? And my audience knows about this stuff. It's not just about having and articulating all of this. It's about actually making sure your audience knows because this is how a culture is formed. So I have my code of conduct. Right, People know what I'm all about. This is like the basis of my mind element for my culture, the cult that I'm building around my personal monopoly. Then we have exposure. Simply the media cons consumption that a culture takes in social media posts, the free trainings that I was posting about the blockchain and all of that. Practices, these are the habits and places a culture goes and the things that they do. So for me, it'd be Instagram, Twitter, Discord. These are the places that we were hanging out for my culture, my, my little group of people. And of course, um, blockchain transactions and interactions, buying cryptocurrency, NFTs, all of that, which ties right into number four, which is artifacts. This is a real big money maker. Purchasable goods and logos. Think of Supreme, right? They've built a cult following around their brand. And that's why they're able to sell artifacts, purchasable goods, with just their logo. They'll sell a stapler with their logo on it for $1,000. That's what I'm talking about when I say artifacts as far as it, when it comes to building a culture. So for my personal brand or my personal monopoly, that would be my book, NFTs, cryptocurrency. When you have those things, it symbolizes that you belong to that particular culture. Does that make sense? We also have protagonists, and these are the main influencers of a culture. 
obviously for your personal monopoly, it would be you yourself as the main protagonist and other key partners and influencers in the blockchain space for me when I was building out my personal monopoly in that area. So think of hip hop. Obviously, we'd have Drake, Lil Wayne, Kanye West as some of those main protagonists within that particular culture. Aesthetics is just the overall design of everything. It kind of blends into all these other elements. So you'll see a certain design language within the artifacts, within the practices, the, the social media platforms, the buildings that you're going to. So all of all the other elements are tied into aesthetics. It's just the design style of everything. And finally, conflict. This is a big one that a lot of people overlook. When you're building out your culture, your personal monopoly, you should have an enemy. You should find some type of conflict because that's what makes stories more alluring. That's what gets people involved and allows them to put themselves into the story and be a protagonist themselves. You need story and drama or chosen enemies. For me, it was anyone who said blockchain is a scam, which is just objectively untrue. It can be used to scam, sure, just like the internet can, but it is not in and of itself a scam. So you need to have that conflict and clearly articulate your enemies. Right now, I would say personal brand, as most people understand it, is my chosen enemy. Authority stack. So within phase one, you need to define your authority stack. It's your irrefutable stack of evidence that you know what you're talking about, that you've accomplished things. This is good not only for showing your audience, but it's also great for building up that confidence within yourself. So for me, that would be speaking at conferences, being interviewed on podcasts, having a circle of protagonists. We're going to explain uh, more about that in a little bit. Circle protagonists is just your close-knit people who are also a part of your culture who can help move the needle forward. You know, these are your partners, the influencers, your collaborators. I taught at university. I published a book. I had personal success in the blockchain space, and I had student success in the blockchain space that I could prove. So all of that morphed into my authority stack. So when people would question me, I'd be like, hey, look, I got my authority right here. And whenever I doubted myself, boom, I just reminded myself of my authority stack. Circle of protagonists. Again, like I just mentioned, these are the group of people closely associated with your brand or culture. I connected and collaborated, collaborated with a number of people with far bigger audiences than mine. I'm going to explain more about that in the value, value bomb strategy a little bit later. Owned audience. This is huge. Most people who are building an online presence totally overlook this and eventually they pay the price. You need to own your audience off of social media. I don't know why people don't do this by default. When you have your followers on social media, your account can get shut off at any time. You don't own that audience. The only way that you can really own your audience is text lists and email lists. You need to collect their information so that if your Instagram account gets shut down tomorrow, you can still reach out to your people through their through their text, uh, through texting or through email. All right. The way I did that was I had a text list, I had an email list, and I had a Discord server. And Discord server is a little bit less of an old audience because they could shut my server down, of course. But that's why I also had the text and email list. So I collect their information and I could reach out directly if something were to happen to my social media platforms. So if you take nothing else away, take that and implement it into your own audience building now. Okay, so that's phase one. Now we're moving into phase two, which is designing your godfather offer and monetization systems. The key outcome here is creating and launching your godfather offer and your offer network. A godfather offer is an offer so outrageously valuable that you'd have to be missing brain cells to say no to. That's what you want your audience to feel when they look at your offer, right? All these buy one, get one free type thing. Those aren't really Godfather offers. And I break this down more in depth um, in other videos on, on this channel. So make sure you go and watch those. But a Godfather offer is vital to have. Now, here's my Godfather offer when I was in the blockchain space, building personal monopoly in that area. So I had my course for 497 where you get my exact blueprint for building an nft portfolio worth over 65,000 in just a few months on top of that when you sign up you get a free extra seat a free 15-minute consultation and a free copy of my book 
honestly, this is not a great Godfather offer. And this is just a summary, right? If you actually go to the sales page, the full Godfather offer, which is more detailed, you get all these other terms and conditions, benefits. This is just a quick summary. But truth be told, my Godfather offer could have been a hell of a lot better. But the NFT space was so hot, it didn't really need to be. Right. And so I do have my Godfather offer a framework that's available um, from my research and development firm, Lifestream Labs. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So you can actually model what that uh, what that would look like for yourself. And then you have offer branching. So offer branching is just a network of your different offers that multiplies your customer lifetime value. So when someone enters into your network of offers, they're going to automatically be funneled to your other offers. I also have an article about this. I'll link that in the description that breaks down how you can set this up for yourself. But here is my offer branching network and how it broke down as far as the revenue that got me to that first six figures. So I had my course and that brought in $69,972.47. I also had equity via consulting. So someone wanted to sell their company, their blockchain to, um, blockchain company, and I came in to consult for them to find them that buyer. I did that and I got equity in that sale. And so that brought me in 12,000. Had my live classes and replays. So I would sell tickets to attend these live sessions with me or catch the replays afterwards. And that brought in 6,700. I had one-on-one -on -one consultations, hundreds of them. And that brought in 5,500. My book sales were at about 5,200. And that's including ebook, physical book, and audiobook. For social media, just you know, posting sometimes Facebook and Instagram will send you some money. That brought in about $461. And then affiliate sales, I was promoting things like the Ledger hardware wallets. Um, so it was very on brand. I wasn't, you know, selling stuff I didn't believe in or use myself. That brought in 330. So that's how this broke down. Now, if you come up here, right, this whole offer network really works together. So you have your gateway products on one side. These are the lower ticket stuff, things like my books, right, and the live classes, which then funneled over into the conviction products. And conviction products are those higher ticket products usually, mid to higher ticket products. So those would be your courses, your consulting, um, licensing the course out. That was another part that brought in some money here as I actually licensed the course out to other creators so that their community of hundreds of students could get access to my course and they would buy bulk access to my course. So that, that brought in some money as well. I think it was uh, 10,000. I think that brought in about 10,000. So licensing is another opportunity. Uh, paid speaking, I didn't include paid speaking on here because I didn't get paid to do any paid uh, to do any speaking, but I did get paid for to come out um, to these different conferences. So all of these kind of work together, right? When I was doing those those speaking gigs, I would talk about my book, I talk about my course, and then they come over here, and then inside the book, it will funnel them over to the course to get a discount, and then inside the course, they can upgrade to get a consulting call, a one hour consulting call with me. So all of this works together in a network. Another thing I did for phase two is a course presale. So before I even finished the actual course, I offered a presale for a discounted price to confirm that there was demand and inject some cash into the business early on. So that's phase two, setting up those monetization systems and your godfather offer. Phase three is developing your marketing machine. The key outcome here is to implement a reliable and consistent marketing strategy. This is exactly how I did it. And these two things, this is very basic. And again, if you don't know already know how to create content and post it, maybe this training is a little bit advanced, but basic, basic stuff you should be doing is batch creating content. Excuse me, right? Creating content in bulk and then scheduling that content out later on. So take an afternoon, take a whole day even, create a ton of content that will set you up for two weeks, three weeks, sometimes even four weeks at a time. And then you can schedule all of that out. I use the platform called Sked Social. It doesn't matter what you use really, but I use Sked Social to schedule out all of my content ahead of time so I didn't have to create content every single day. A lot of people who get stuck in that personal branding trap 
tend to be at that point where they have to be on that content hamster wheel of creating content every single day to stay consistent. And maybe you're not posting every day, maybe you're posting every other day, but the problem is when you have to create content to post it. You should already have it created. You should have a backlog of content that you can schedule out ahead of time so that you don't have to worry about it. The value bomb strategy, this is huge. This is by far one of my favorite parts of this framework. It's a deliberate strategy to deliver value to ideal partners in your circle of protagonists. So again, the circle of protagonists is your ideal people who you want associated with your brand and culture, right? Because if you were in hip hop, if you're starting to be a rapper, right? You would want cosigns from Kanye West, from Drake. You would want them to be in your circle of protagonists to help build your authority and further your, your personal monopoly. So that's what you need to think about when you think of your circle of protagonists. And then the value bomb strategy is how you actually get in touch with them, how you form that relationship. So using this strategy got me invited to private tech launches. It got me a consulting contract with a millionaire and a startup. Actually, I didn't add that in here. Uh, well, actually, I did at the end. Um, a course partnership with an influencer with over 800,000 followers, right? So he became an affiliate for the course. He was the one who bought a bulk access to, to my course for a bunch of his students. And got me literally thousands of dollars of free NFTs and a consulting contract with a tech startup, like I mentioned. So this works, right? This is pretty detailed, right? I'm not going to go into all of the details right here because I don't want this training to be too long. I just want to summarize the, the basic strategy I use to get to that six figure point with a tiny audience. But this works, right? So it's, it's a bit more involved than just provide value to people, which anyone can tell you. Right. This is really strategic um, and really fine tuned and dialed in. So I've got, got some screenshots. If you don't know Idris Sandu, look him up. Huge tech futurist and genius. Um, and what he did is when I delivered my value bomb to him, this was his response. And he invited me right here uh, to his launch event that he was doing for uh, his upcoming tech product. That launch did happen wasn't able to attend because I had another obligation at that, at that same day. But, um, you know, at some point, you know, him and I are still in contact from time to time, but the invites right there because of the value bomb strategy, this is me, uh, locking in that consulting contract. Um, of course I had to blur some details for confidentiality, but the value bomb strategy works. It's insane what it can do. It's insane. Review teams. And these are your super fans, right? So for me, it was literally a review team, but you need to have super fans either way. And I have a, another framework. It's called the super, super fan flywheel that I'll break down in another training video. But you need to identify your super fans, the people who are really going to go above and beyond to help further your, your personal monopoly. So to prepare for my book launch, I handpicked about 100 people to be on my review team. And so in exchange for being on my review team, they would receive an early copy and a free copy of my book in exchange for leaving a review once the book launched. And so not all 100 people actually left that review, of course, because not all of them read the book, but a good majority of them did. And because of that, I was able to launch on launch day and get multiple bestseller tags on Amazon. So it wasn't like bestseller on the entire Amazon store, but in these particular categories, I was hitting uh, number two here for analysis and trading strategies. Um, and then number one in business software and number one in online trading. And then the overall sales rank was 5,420 um, for first, I, I think it was for, for first week, I was in that zone, right in this area of, of 5,000. And that's pretty damn good. Like on Amazon with the millions of books that are on there, that's pretty good. So my launch week was a huge success. And of course, the book redirected all my readers to join the course at a discount and to join my text list. So I was owning my audience through that way as well. Because you don't want to, you don't own your audience here on Amazon. You need to have a way to get in contact with them directly. And so I implemented those uh, those systems to make that automated for me. So phase four. It's going to be AI automations and systems. So the key outcome here is implementing the systems to allow your personal monopoly to scale on autopilot, to scale and operate on autopilot. So the way I did it is by having a very refined tech stack. For any funnels that I was building, I was using Go High Level, great platform to use. 
for my community management. I was on Superphone for my text list and Discord uh, to build out that community channel to just chat back and forth. Websites I would build over on Webflow and some of them on Go High Level as well. For organization and strategy and planning, I was using Notion. Sales in my CRM was on Go High Level as well. Design, I was just using Canva. And my merchant account was Stripe to process payments. Very, very simple, bare bones. And, you know, there was a couple other tools that I would use here and there, but this is the majority of what made up the, the tech stack to build out those systems for my personal brand, my personal monopoly. DM automation, this is huge. I use ManyChat to save literally hours of my time and energy responding to DMs because a lot of DMs that you're going to get when you start building out that personal monopoly are going to be kind of repetitive, kind of answering the same questions. You might even have you know, a copy and paste answer within your notes. You can shortcut all of that by using a platform like ManyChat to automatically respond to people. And if you ever see people saying, hey, DM me with the word XYZ to get this, they're using ManyChat to handle that. That's how they do it. It's an automated response. I um, mean, you can even integrate ChatGPT to make it completely automated, where instead of just giving boilerplate copy page responses to people's keyword response uh, DMs, you can actually have ChatGPT respond in your tone of voice and have a conversation with them more organically. So many chat, highly recommend. Automated follow-ups uh, through sequences and funnels. So once someone opted into one of my lead magnets or products, they received a series of follow-up texts and emails that delivered additional value, built trust, and promoted my other offers within the offer branching network. This is very basic. Y'all should already be doing this. If you're not already, start doing it now. So when someone signs up for your email list, they should have a series of emails to warm them up, to build more trust with you, and to give them more value as well. Don't go shy on the value. Give them some more value, some additional resources, right? So when someone opted in uh, for one of my free trainings, right, I would send them an, uh, a series of emails, probably like seven to 12 emails, just following up with them saying, hey, don't forget I got my course. Don't forget I got my book. And don't forget I got this other free training for you if you're not ready for any of that stuff. So I kept in contact with them. You need to have this set up so that you don't have to be manually following up with all these people and trying to warm up all these individual people rather than just having a system that will do that for you. Live Pigeon is a tool I didn't use as much as I would have liked, but it is pretty cool. Live Pigeon allows you to go live on Instagram or Facebook without actually going live. So you could pre-record your, your video and then you can stream it to Instagram live as if it was actually going live right then. So if you're going on vacation, right, and you normally go live once a week, Okay, record your live stream ahead of time, upload it to Live Pigeon and schedule it out. It will run and go live for you without you having to actually be there. And something I will note is, you know, let people know. I say you just let people know. Like if you do a pre recorded live video, just say in that video, hey, this is pre recorded, so I'm not going to be responding to comments, just so that people know. You know, I think it's better to not deceive people in that way. Um, just, just put them on notice, hey, it's not actually live. I'm just live streaming this pre recorded video. But yeah, that's very helpful. Artificial intelligence. I wasn't using it back then, but I am absolutely using it now. And I have a free guide here for using ChatGPT on God mode by creating the perfect AI prompts every single time. So I'll put that link in the description as well for you. And it, all of this doesn't really matter unless I'm any good at teaching other people how to do these different things, right? And I am. I have a bunch of client testimonials that you can watch through. Again, you have this whole presentation document. So you can come through and watch these videos yourself. You can pause this, pause the video right now. You can look at these different testimonials. But again, when you get the actual link to this presentation, you can come through and play all these videos of people who I've done consulting or coaching for. And right now I have my newest client and she has over 20,000 followers on TikTok and she's in the health and wellness niche, but she doesn't have a concrete monetization strategy, which is exactly who I'm designed to help. And so I'm running her through the brand supremacy framework right now. And some of the things that we're doing is we're starting to transition her audience to being owned, right? So now she just launched her newsletter and she's funneling people on her TikTok over to that newsletter. And it's going to be helping them learn how to quit smoking and the process and expectations that they can expect 
when they're going through that entire process. And then she's going to collect the case studies of people she's helped because she's put um, just video content that have helped inspire people to quit smoking already. And so she's now reaching out to them to collect these case studies and testimonials. And at some point, she may launch a paid cohort or coaching program to walk people through that process because it's going to be a lot easier for people to quit smoking when they have other people going on that same journey with them, right? So that's another thing that she's considering doing. We're also looking to, once the newsletter starts growing even more, sponsoring, finding sponsors to pay her to be in that newsletter and getting some affiliate deals as well. In addition to that, because she's more in the health and wellness niche as a whole, we're also looking at white labeling merch and supplements and leveraging the TikTok shop. So this is stuff she hasn't really considered or started doing until she started implementing the brand supremacy framework. On top of that, she developed so much clarity because now she knows what her actual culture, we went through the cultural framework model over a call together. So now she's gone through that process. She's built her authority stacks. So now she has the confidence to go through with all of this. So the next steps for you, if this makes sense, steal this, take this from me, literally copy this framework and implement it into your own online presence. So if you want to get this whole presentation, brandsupremacy.io slash flagship. I'll put the link in the description as well. That's how you're going to get access to this entire document. So you can literally just steal this and implement it into your own business and personal monopoly. You can also be lurking, right? Watch me as I'm implementing this framework in real time across all of my social media platforms, right? So I've already started it. So you won't get to see it from the very beginning, but you can see that I'm still doing it. You can find the different elements and which phases I'm working on at any given time. If you want to shortcut that entire process of stealing and trying to copy it over into your own business, if you want me to help install the brand supremacy framework into your business and brand with you, just DM me the word brand on Instagram and we'll brainstorm some ideas. It'll be free, right? We'll brainstorm some ideas if we want that we can transition that over to a call where we talk more ideas and see if you'd be a good fit for the brand supremacy framework. But for now, just DM me the word brand on Instagram and I'll get back to you and we can start talking ideas on what might make sense for your personal monopoly and transitioning you from that personal branding trap to a personal monopoly. With that said, thank you so much uh, for watching this entire video. Make sure you go and grab this document at brandsupremacy.io slash flagship link in the description. Thank you so much. Bye.